Welcome to our lecture online. Now that we're able to find angles in three dimensions, let's see if we can find these angles in three dimensions and there's also the tension on one of the guidelines. So here's, there's three lines holding this antenna upright and let's say that the tension in this wire right here is 10,000 newtons. Notice the placement of the anchor here, the placement of the anchor there, the placement of the anchor there. Uh, let's say that this here would be the, uh, that would be the Z axis. And of course, this here would be in the Y direction. This is the Y axis right there. Okay, and then we have, of course, the X axis. Okay, so what we're trying to do here is find the angle between this line and the X axis, the angle between that line and the Y axis, between that line and the Z axis. We also want to find the X, the Y, and the Z component of the tension of that line. Okay, we use, of course, the direction cosine. We know that theta sub x, by definition, is equal to the r cosine of the component. That would be the uh, length in the x direction divided by the total length. We know that the angle in the y direction, or relative to the y direction, is equal to the r cosine of the length in the y direction divided by the total length. And the angle between the line and the z direction is equal to the r cosine times the length of that wire in the z direction divided by the total length. So that's how we use the direction cosines to find the angles between this line, the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. Of course, that necessitates us to find the length of that wire. So let's do that. We can say that the length of the wire is equal to the square root of the length in the x-direction squared plus the length in the y-direction squared plus the length in the z-direction squared. This is equal to the square root of... Okay, let's go over here. Notice that, oh, I didn't put the height down, did I? So this is a 20 meter tall tower, I can't forget that. So in the y direction it's 20 meters, in the x direction it's four meters, and in the z direction it's five meters. So those are the components of the length of this wire here. So L sub x, uh, that would be uh, four meters, we square that. L sub y, that would be five meters. And even though the x direction, of course, is negative, we don't care because we're squaring it. And now for the y direction, it would be plus 20 squared. And that would be equal to 425, 441 square root of that would be, I think it's 21. Let me check real quick with my calculator. So we have 400 plus 25 plus 16. Yeah, that's certainly 21 meters. So the total length is 21 meters. So now we can use the direction cosines to find the angle with respect to the x-axis, the angle with respect to the y-axis, and the angle with respect to the z-axis. So this is equal to the r cosine of L sub x, which is 4 divided by 21. r cosine of L sub y, which is, uh, ooh, did I have that reversed? I certainly do. I believe the y direction is 20, so let me put 20 there. Let me put 5 there, so it's a little bit more correct. So 20 divided by 21 and the angle between the z direction 5 divided by 21. All right, so calculator wise, we have 4 divided by 21. Take the r cosine of that, we get 79 degrees, 79.0 degrees, 79.0 degrees, which is the angle between this line right here and the x axis. Okay, so this here would be 20. Divided by 21, take the r cosine of that, and that gives us 17.8 degrees. And finally, we get 5 divided by 21, take the r cosine of that, 76.2 degrees. Now notice it is easy to see the angle between the line and the y-axis because that would be this angle right here. And you can see that's about a 17.8 degree angle. So that seems to make sense. But how do you make sense out of the angle between this line and the x-axis and that line and the z-axis? So one thing that we could do is we can move this line just like we would move a vector and draw the equivalent line. Think of that line as a force vector because obviously it's under tension. And if we move this line down here, we keep the same angle, the same magnitude, like this. Now we can see there's an angle between that line and the x-axis, it would be theta sub x, and the line between that and the z-axis, which would be theta sub z. Of course, with the perspective, it's a little harder to see there, but that's how you can notice that theta sub x is 79 degrees, and theta sub z is 76 degrees. Remember, this is almost going vertically downward, so that's an angle a little bit less than 90 degrees between that line and the z-axis. 
Now that we know the direction of each of those lines, we know the length of each of those lines, I mean the length of each of the components, we know the angles between the line and each of the three axes x, y, and z, we can now try to find the tension in the three directions. So we can say here that the tension in the x direction is equal to the tension times the cosine of theta sub x. The tension in the y direction is equal to the tension times the cosine of theta sub y. And the tension in the z direction is equal to the tension times the cosine of theta sub z. So we use the direction cosines and then we use the angles from that to find the tension in each direction. So this is equal to 10,000 newtons times the cosine of 79 degrees. This is equal to 10,000 newtons times the cosine of 17.8 degrees. And then this is equal to the tension, 10,000 newtons times the cosine of 76 0.2 degrees. So that's how we use the angles from the direction cosines to find the tension in each of the components. So 79, take the cosine of that and multiply times 10,000. We get 1,908 newtons. So this is equal to 1,908 newtons. All right, to find the y component, so we take 17.8 Take the cosine of that, that would be 9,522 9, newtons. And finally, in the z direction, that would be 76.2. Take the cosine of that and times 10,000, that would be 2,385 newtons. And likewise, if you want to check to see if we did that correctly, what we can do now is we can square each of the three components, add them together, take the square root, and that should add up, of course, to 10,000. So let's do that real quick and see if we get the right answer. So we take 1908 squared plus 9522 squared plus 2385 squared equals, take the square root, and sure enough, 10,000. And that's how you verify that you got the right answer. So there we find the three angles between the line and the x, y, and z axis, and the three tensions, or as you say, should say, the three components in the x, y, and z direction of the tension on that line. And that's how it's done. The way they came through here, like... <laughs>